Back here in studio with me now is, uh, is uh, Francesca Page of Newsmax TV. And uh, also joining us is Jennifer Marshall. Uh, she is the vice president for the Institute for Family, Op Community, and Opportunity for the Heritage Foundation. Jennifer, we thank you for your time. Thanks for Skyping in from Washington. And uh, can you explain for us these key indices you're tracking and why they're so important? Well, thank you so much for having me on. It's my pleasure to talk about these issues because they're so important for America and the opportunity of all Americans. When we talk about opportunity, we, we sometimes have a reductionist conversation that focuses primarily on economic indicators. But really, we've got to be talking about the cultural and social underpinnings of opportunity as well. And that's why in the 31 indicators that we cover in the Index of Culture and Opportunity, we look at a range of culture, cultural indicators as well as poverty and dependence indicators and economic and educational ones. And what we find is that too many of these are headed in the wrong direction. Uh, but we do have some high points and, and some things that are going in the right direction. The purpose of the index is to get more of those wrong indicators on the wrong track going in the right direction. Jennifer, what trends are we actually seeing at this point? Well, one of the things that's very concerning is the rapid growth in unwed childbearing. This year, we're looking at the 50th anniversary of the War on Poverty. And when that began in the 60s, the unwed childbearing rate was single digit. It was about 6 or 8%. Today, 4 out of 10 children are born outside of marriage. And among blacks, it's more than 70%. That is going to have a profound effect on a child's life, and they're going to be at much greater risk of challenges, whether it's educationally or in economic terms, much greater risk of being at, in poverty and so on. Now, those challenges can be overcome, and it's wonderful when we see people meeting the odds and beating the odds. But we do have to admit these are odds that have to be overcome, and that's why following this as a society and bringing policy and cultural effort to bear on these questions is the way that we can turn these indicators around. It's what we're trying to do with the Index of Culture and Opportunity. Uh, Jennifer, would you say in, in that sense, are we moving in a negative direction when it comes to culture and opportunity? I mean, is there any good news in terms of trends? There are, there are some good spots in this, and Catherine Lopez highlights one in her article that she submitted. We have about a dozen commentators who contributed pieces to this, and it's, it makes it a very good read. The, one of the great uh, positive lights is that the abortion rate is declining, and that has been the result of focused policy energy. We've seen so many pro-life laws passed at the state level, and also cultural effort. All the creative ways that uh, churches and ministries and individuals are reaching out to help women who may be facing an unplanned pregnancy. These have brought about a reduction in the, the abortion rate, and it's, it's still too high. We have far too many abortions in America, but we have made progress and we can make more. Jennifer, one of the indicators you chart is self-sufficiency, or the ability of a family to sustain an income above the poverty line without welfare assistance. We, we've seen a decline in the number of people living in poverty uh, actually increasing by more than two percentage points. So why this uptick and have the administration's social welfare policies played a part in this uptick? So what we're seeing is that since the beginning of the war on poverty, the poverty rate has remained pretty much the same. It's very largely unchanged. Now, w there is quite a bit more uh, service and help given from the federal government. So uh, there, there, in fact, we're, we have 80 federal programs right now that are supplying one, that they're funded at the tune of $1 trillion at both state and federal level. And this is, these are supplying cash, food, housing, medical assistance, social services to poor and low-income Americans. And, and what we're seeing is that there's greater dependency on these programs, but there hasn't been an increase in the self-sufficiency. That is the ability of a family to uh, maintain themselves, maintain their household absent these forms of, of government welfare. So 
and, and that's ironic because what President Johnson wanted to do with the war on poverty was precisely that, to increase self-sufficiency. So instead, what we've seen is the legacy of the Great Society and the war on poverty is a cyclical kind of dependence, that it, a welfare dependence that's passed on too many times from generation to generation. So we're going to have to break that cycle by focusing on two things, focusing on uh, work and on marriage, because often child poverty is associated with father absence and dependency on welfare is associated with with single parent homes. So rebuilding a culture of marriage, reestablishing work is highly important. It's something we discuss in the index of culture and opportunity. So Jennifer, let's hone that down, taking self-sufficiency as an example here. How do you think we, sh we should reverse these negative trends, in your opinion? Well, number one, we've got to, policymakers need to understand the incentives that policy uh, brings about. If we have a welfare system that is offering handouts rather than hand up, a hand up system where work is expected of those who are able bodied and able to contribute, uh, we're going to see uh, more worklessness. If we have a work, pol work based welfare policy, we're going to see greater movement towards independence. The same thing with regulations. If we have uh, a high burden of regulation on new startup businesses, we're going to see fewer jobs created by those startups. So incentives matter in policy. And then the second piece is the story of personal responsibility that's a part of any of these cultural indicators. It begins with us. It begins with me and how I live my life and how each of us lives our lives and then uh, how we work together in community, whether that's in the family, in the neighborhood, in the religious congregation. All of these communities have a role to play in restoring our culture. And as you point out where it begins, Jennifer Marshall, that's where we'll have to end it right now. We thank you for your perspective on this as the vice president of the Institute for Family, Community, and Opportunity at the Heritage Foundation. Thank you so much. Thank and you. We'd like to get your comments. Why don't you tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum.